Hey everybody, welcome to another Cycroft episode. So this will be a progress update episode. We've done a lot of progress off camera. For example, we finished the Mushroom Island biome piston bolt, or we made a complete new perimeter, and also to show some progress on some ongoing projects like the quarries. So we arrived at the Mega Tiger Nether Hub, but now we could actually call it the Nether Hub because there are in total four piston bolt connections. So two at the top and two at the bottom. Yeah, we also started an another one. I want to talk about this later. Uh, so it's definitely a mini Nether Hub by now. There's also an ice tunnel, another portal. So mini Nether Hub at the Mega Tiger. Uh, the project itself isn't completely finished yet. I still need to build some walls around here to make it look a bit nicer and also to make it gas safe in case the mob switch isn't activated. But as always, I procrastinate on the decoration projects. But anyway, the piston bolt, which was the focus of the last three episodes, is almost completely finished. Um, so yeah, it, it works, but we still need to fill in the red mushrooms in the flower pots. And this is something Pella wants to do. So he's planning to make a super fast red mushroom farm, just because we can, not, not because we need it. And he will show this on uh, yeah, his YouTube channel. We'll make a Let's Play episode about building the red mushroom farm and also filling in the flower pots. Right, I would say we could actually ride this piston bolt I'm definitely gonna speed up the video since it takes, I think, three minutes if you have 20 TPS to get to the Mushroom Island biome. And there we are. Took quite a while because the server is actually running at 10 TPS because the quarry is running, but we finally arrived. Also, this hasn't been decorated at all. Um, yeah, at some point. I think I haven't actually shown the Mushroom Island biome yet. So this is the huge Mushroom Island. So it's not important that it is uh, very long or so on. It's more important that if you stand in the center AFK chunk, you have a lot of uh, Mushroom Island biome around you. So ideally you would have um, a 17 by 17 chunk square completely out of Mushroom Island biome. Um, but in most cases there's some ocean biome or river biome in between. So I don't think we can find the perfect Mushroom Island. Uh, it's quite rare and this is by far the best one we found within 100k from spawn. Okay, so obviously the plan is now to mine everything down to bedrock, make a perimeter again in order to build a Y-value mushroom farm and so on. Um, but the project's a little bit of on ice because there's one super nice 1.13 feature, which is the node block giving out block updates when being powered to other blocks. And this is yeah, the perfect block for a problem we had with the, uh, the, the mushroom cow farm in order to make it as compact as possible. So we're definitely gonna wait um, building this farm to, until 1.13 because we need this feature more or less. Uh, we can definitely already yeah, bump it down to bedrock with the 1.12 dupers. We definitely should do that since it's fixed in 1.13. Um, but yeah, there's also other projects we want to do first. You might have noticed that we mined away some mycelium, which was used for the piston bolt. In the last episode, I mentioned that we might build an AFK mycelium farm in, in this episode, but it was so much quicker to just to gather it by hand here, a few shulker boxes, then to build the farm. But we have a design in creative, quite simple, AFK grass and mycelium farm, that, would, that I definitely want to build at some point. But since we don't need it right now, I'm gonna delay this a little bit. All right, back at the Mega Tiger Nether Hub, and now let's talk about the second piston bolt. So some people will probably recognize this from the 36 hour live stream. This one leads to a double witch hut perimeter. Let's say, Let's go there to check it out. Um, this piston bolt is actually also quite long. The other one is the. So let me just a little bit down. The other one was the longest piston bolt we've ever built. With uh, I think the diagonal part was over 2k and the straight part almost 2k. And this one is also quite long. So this one has a straight part of about 1200 blocks. Then there's a diagonal part coming. So we go diagonal for 400 blocks and then straight again for 300. There's also quite a lot of effort to build this one here. 
But uh, lately there was a lot of activity in the Cycroft server, everybody is joining in the projects. So we also yeah, finished this within a week or so. So this location here is the destination of the Piston Vault. It's our latest perimeter on the Cycroft server. It was built around a double witch hut uh, in the middle. Since the center chunk is the AFK chunk in the end. And as you can see, the darker water outlines a swamp biome. We had two witch huts here. So this place is at 16k minus 13k. It's actually one of the closest uh, double witch huts from spawn, apart from our quad witch hut farm, obviously. I guess a lot of people will also recognize this place from the Twitch stream marathon we did. So whole Cycroft crew. The goal was to make this perimeter thin 36 hours. In the end this was actually quite close, got it quite exciting. Uh, we managed to finish this project within 35 hours and 10 minutes. And we also started from complete scratch, so we had completely normal terrain first and managed to make this perimeter thin yeah, 36 hours. The whole stream was also a big success, all the Cycrofters had a lot of fun. The end was quite <laughs> exhausting as well, so remember. 10 minutes after the stream I went to bed and slept immediately, I was quite exhausted, but it was a lot of fun. Also I didn't um, yeah, play Minecraft for 36 hours straight, I slept in between, in case somebody is worried. <laughs> uh, we yeah, took turns, um, so we made the trenches first, we needed for the TT duping system, then we built it up. So we actually played 15 hours straight of Minecraft, then the TT duping system got started and yeah, I went to sleep for 6 hours and joined the stream on the next day again. It was quite a lot of fun and might do a similar project at some point, but obviously it's quite exhausting and a lot of people need to have basically a complete weekend of free time in order yeah, to make such a project, but definitely want to do something similar again. One of the most frequently asked questions during the live stream was why you're doing this, especially since you already have a quad Richard farm. Why do you need a double Richard farm as well? And the answer is quite simple. The quad witch hut farm isn't fast enough for our needs, that is. Uh, so we AFK'd almost 1000 hours at the quad witch hut farm and still we are about to run out of redstone dust again. Um, and yeah, if you look at it, a witch hut isn't that large, it's quite small. It only offers 189 spawning spaces. And even if you have a quad witch hut, then you can't even fill the mob cap with all the witches. And additionally, only an eighth of the witch drops is redstone dust. So I did a quick calculation. In order to get a shulker box full of redstone blocks, you would need to AFK at least five hours at a quad witch hut farm. A shulker box of redstone blocks sounds like much, but if you're doing bigger flying machines that often require redstone blocks or some mob farms that require redstone blocks, then you actually run out of it quickly. So and that's why we decided we need to increase the output of our witch farms. Six farms are faster than four, obviously, so we can just put a second account at a double witch hut farm and the main account at a quad witch hut farm in order to just increase the output. Um, but one of the factors that also influences the farms always is lag. Um, so having a second account in a completely normal world already lags the game quite a bit. So if you're standing in a normal forest biome and you look at your F3 screen, then you see that the amount of entities quickly increases. So at the moment we are at 70, but this can go up to 400. Reason is animals and entities create a lot of lag. So that's why we made this huge perimeter. In case somebody mentions, yeah, we could just light up caves and so on. Uh, that's actually not enough in this case since we want to, despite the perfect spawning conditions, we also want to create the perfect lag conditions. So we don't have any zombies with, uh, that pick up items somewhere in caves. We don't have any, any animals around here. In the center chunk, which is in the middle of the perimeter, there's basically only um, yeah, bombed out chunks around it. So there's basically nothing. One measure in order to decrease lag additionally is to fill up the lowest subchunk, um, for example stone blocks, which enemy already started. This additionally decreases the amount of lag, so I'm probably gonna build a machine here because enemy started it by just placing lava buckets, uh, which is probably not feasible to do by hand. So I'm probably also gonna build a machine here to decrease lag even further. 
So back at the main nether hub, I would say let's also check out the progress of the nether quarry. So there are 417 slices left. Also another thing I want to show, so it's directly next to the quarry, so it makes sense to go there. So here we are at the nether quarry site. The quarry had a lot of downtime in the last few weeks and months. Um, so we had a lot of other projects ongoing that required a lot of the server resources in regards to CPU performance. So we couldn't run the quarry as well, but yeah, we're turning in, uh, it back on now more and more. For example, the sand tubing project required all of the uh, server performance and so on. So the, nevertheless, the progress so far is quite impressive, I would say. And yeah, this, let's, let's check out the other project I was talking about, which starts near the quarry site. Take a guess what it is. It's another piston bolt. And maybe you want to take another guess where it leads to? Yep, another witch hut. So what's faster than six witch huts or six witch hut farms? Obviously eight witch hut farms. So this is also quite a long piston bolt. We built this around Christmas. A Norwegian artist and also Cycroft member live streamed quite a bit of the progress. Um, yeah, what else is to say? It's quite a long one. The witch hut farm is at 23k. Minus 18k if I remember right, so this is also quite a long piston bolt. I just had the shock of my life. So this is the end of the piston bolt. Like 20 minutes ago, I went through this portal here. Where a perimeter is supposed to be. Okay, the first I thought that maybe Oreo moved the portal somewhere outside of the perimeter. But then I saw that, that there's actually a witch farm. And we somehow got a chunk corruption. They repopulated the chunks that are supposed to be in the perimeter. So we already have a witch farm, witch farm built here. And yeah, two thirds of the perimeter somehow got corrupted. I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah. So at the moment we're discussing what to do now. Obviously we <laughs> don't accept that this just happens. Um, we're gonna search for all the backups now where we can just edit it back in. I mean, this was such a, such a lot of effort. You can see at the bottom, this was all hand placed, the glowstone here, in order to fill in the gaps in between. Ori already built a witch farm, uh, two witch farms there. And this just got repopulated. So I made a backup from yesterday. I'm gonna check first if it's still there in that one. And I have one from three weeks ago, and I think Ori has one from 10 days ago. So I hope we can get the progress back. Unfortunately, the chunk corruption already occurred in yesterday's backup and at the moment here in the backup from three weeks ago in single player. And unfortunately, this was and we took this right before we started the world eater at that location in order just to be sure that the world eater works. Really unfortunate, as you can see, we made all the transfers around it. And yeah, a lot of progress would have been lost, but luckily, Oreo says he has a backup from 10 days ago. Quite sure 10 days ago we already finished the complete perimeter, placed all the glowstone dust, flooded it. But I'm not sure if Oreo already built his two witch farms there. So I guess with the help of MC Edit, I'm just gonna restore the progress somehow. Because this is clearly not our fault. Chunk corruptions occasionally happen in Minecraft. This incident has me worried quite a bit because who knows what other chunks are affected by this corruption. And it's also not the first time we had a a chunk corruption on the server. A few months ago we had a few chunks near the nether hub regenerating completely and this time it affected a complete area of chunks. So I'm also not sure what caused this. Maybe I'm not careful enough while doing backups. Uh, so usually just take the backups while the server is running. M might be more secure to stop the server completely, set it to FTP only mode, download the world and then restart the server again in order maybe to avoid those chunk corruptions. Could you imagine this if the player does something in those chunks while the backup is being done that this causes some issues and that might, might cause the corruption. Um, maybe somebody in the comments can tell me if, if this is, an, is a problem. Anyway, let's continue with the progress so, uh, server tour more or less. <laughs> uh, this is the 360 by 360 nether perimeter. Uh, we started about a year ago. And the quarry that we built here was finished in September. The original plan was to make a wizard skeleton farm in here, but by now this has changed. 
currently um, we want to use this perimeter for a blaze farm probably. There was a nether fortress in the middle, so we can make a place from here. Uh, Oreo is working on a design. Um, it's looking good so far, but yeah, we'll see if it works out in the end. So as we're currently making some progress, as you can see, uh, Pella built this three-directional TNT quarry in order to remove the remaining eight or nine layers with minimal effort. Uh, we also had to remove the, yeah, the quarry itself, the slime work structure. So Pella did that yesterday. On the other end, I think he just wants to tube over that actually. In order to remove it. And that's pretty much it about this place. I think there's a lot of items also still left. I also might need to bring them over. I think the few million nether bricks are still yeah, stored in here. So we should also definitely move it. And stress and hoppers also created a bit of lag. If you would stand at the AFK spot, it's still within reach. We should yeah, just move it somewhere else. So what's better than 8 Witchards? Hmm, yeah, 10 Witchards of course. So that's why we're working on another long piston bolt going to another double Witchard. Um, so you can try to follow it a bit. The piston bolt again will be quite long. I think it's 3000 blocks in total. And there's probably no point trying to reach the end. We also haven't started on the actual perimeter yet. Probably will do so once this piston bolt is finished. It shouldn't take long, so we again use the same machines in order to bend the rails and so on. Should be just a matter of days until we also finish this one here. Um, so you might also be wondering why you're just going for double witch shots, not a triple or quadruple witch shot. Um, so you can't have another two quadruple witch shots in the same seat. GV37 recently explained it to me, so the way those uh, witch shots are generated makes it impossible to have a seed with two quad witch huts. Uh, so the next best would be to go for a triple witch hut, but they are also quite rare. We actually searched for it, so XCOM uh, rewrote a, a seed finder a little bit in order to search for the closest triple witch hut, and the closest one is over a million blocks away from spawn in the overworld. Uh, and that's still over 10,000 blocks in the nether, which makes this not really feasible. So we're probably just gonna go for double witch shots instead. So usually you can find them within they had ten thousand blocks from spawn the first ones and then they're also still rare if I mean ten thousand blocks is quite a distance, but they're quite common. So in the end we're gonna have ten witch farms and four perimeters. I'm quite confident that the server can handle this. But we need to do some optimization. So first of all the witch shots we want to build there should be quite lag efficient. And also the quad witch perimeter needs to be prepared a little bit. There's a lot of stuff going on there. We have uh, slime farms there that require iron golems. And we have a brewing system with armor stands and tons of hoppers. So we need to clean up a little bit in order to make the quad witch perimeter more lag friendly. So this whole project would work in the end. We also have a bit of a friendly rivalry going on with another technical server. They're currently, as far as we know, working on making their third perimeter for eight witch huts. So we definitely want to stay ahead uh, and make 10 <laughs> just for the bragging rights. A bit funny to have this friendly rivalry going on. All right, so this is the end of the progress update episode. It was a bit talky one, but definitely not cheap. Literally over 100 hours of effort went into making it. And that's not even all we've done recently. So there's more to show, which you can either see on my channel or uh, with the big server tour with all Psycrafters, also on my channel or Regus channel. And there's also something else. We have even two other Psycrafters that do semi regular content on the server. So there's Gnembon and Pella Pella. Gnembon also shows progress on the projects he's working on. So every few months he's releasing a Psycraft video. And there's also Pella Pella that recently started making Let's Play episodes. Um, yeah, there's a link to both channels in the description. Check it out if you want to see more. Thanks a lot for watching, have a nice day, bye bye!